Hello, Word Nerds! Happiest of Mondays! I gave a review a long time ago of a program called Auto Realm, which is a free, safe program that's used for making maps. And I love Auto Realm. It is what I use for all of my map making now, which as a fantasy author is kind of a lot of map making. So today I'm gonna do a little tutorial, walk you through my process for map making in Auto Realm. Magic. I'm over at the desk now. Yeah! So as you can see, I've got Auto Realm pulled up right now. This is what the basic screen looks like when you open the program. Just to clarify, I'm not an Auto Realm master by any stretch of the imagination. I'm going to be showing you the few tools that are really simple to use that I like to use when I'm making my maps. So let's get started. My first and most favorite tool to use is the fractal line tool. This is really great because when you're trying to draw a map or when you're doing it in paint, your lines just come out straight and they don't look super mappish, but these lines look so jagged and mappy. So I don't have a particular place in mind right now, so this is just going to be off the cuff, I am making this random land. When I'm making these, I like to just remember that land is uneven and there's lots of little dips and curves and inlets and stuff like that. All right, so I can use this zoom tool over here to zoom out a little bit and get a better feel for my whole thing. That looks great. I'm gonna add a few islands over here just cause islands are realistic. Let's put a big island here too. Wow, I bet that's some contested land right there. Everybody wants a piece of that. That sounded kind of messed up. I feel kind of like a douche for saying that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to this beautiful, beautiful land I'm creating. So the first thing I like to do once I have this basic outline is I like to change up the color, the main color up here of my fractal line and put in some rivers because that's gonna really help dictate a lot of country lines and things like that. I'm sure there's some rule about where these lakes ought to be and which direction they ought to go. But I am not a published author, nor am I a professional cartographer, so... What can you do? Occasionally your fractal lines will veer out of where you want them to go, in which case you can just hit Control Z and it undoes it for you. So I really like to just play around with these lines. You'll see they kind of snap to the other lines if it senses that that's where you're trying to go. Ooh, that kind of looks like a face. I bet that would have something to do with what they call the island. And now I'm gonna wanna write a book about this place that I'm creating, cause it's gonna take me so long. And while I'm making this, I'm not setting out with the intent to get every single body of water, every single little estuary or anything. This is just all the major things that might be useful for me to know when I am writing about this world. Just to clarify, when I'm doing these fractal lines, I'm holding down my mouse for each line and then I let go when the line is where I want it to be and I usually keep my mouse in that same place if I want to pick it up and keep going like this. So click and hold, drag, that looks great, let go. Click and hold, drag, that looks great, let go. But ultimately I don't want a lake there, so goodbye lake. All right, this looks great for now for bodies of water. I can always come back and add more later if I decide that I want them. 
it's usually at this point before I start to go in and add all of the cities and all of the different types of land like deserts and marshes and things like that I like to go up here where are you to this measuring tool the ruler and I like to measure my land so if you right click you can change units I have mine set to miles but you could also do um, inches, feet, cubits, yard, meters, fathoms, rod, chains, furlongs, kilometers. Um, you could see how long it would take on foot in a rugged terrain, um, by wagon, by war horse, by regular horse. It's amazing. Even they have sci-fi like light years and parsecs. So this is one of my favorite tools because it can match up just about any world you want. I'm going to change my units to days by horse right now since this is a fantasy world and they're not going to have cars. So if you click and drag, you can drag it straight across like this. Like, oh cool, this world's going to take 1.56 days by horse. Or if you want, you can go up here and use the measurement string, in which case you could actually like move it around like, oh, maybe there's only a bridge right here, so they have to go down, and then there's a desert over there, so they have to go up. But the bridge is over here, so they have to go over that way. And then the only important city is down here, so to get to all the actual important things, it would take 2.54 days. And this is just, in general, good information to know. Um, just for your brain. You don't have to go by the uh, parameters that the program sets for you if you're gonna be printing this on your own so in your head it's much bigger or much smaller I just like to use it to try and get more of a feel for how big things are so now this is my favorite part of this program down here in the bottom bar you have so many options for little icons to add so we're just gonna take a minute scroll through all these to show you. All right, we've been through all these. So I'm gonna get started on my map. Things that I like to focus on, particularly are landscapes, like on the Overland map. Um, there's like wastelands, deserts, rocky deserts, just all sorts of different possibilities for geography that you might not normally think of, but that would actually pretty intensely affect your characters and how they travel and their own sets of beliefs. Like if they live in a desert, they're going to behave and believe very differently than someone who lives in a grassland or the jungle. One thing that you'll want to keep in mind is that for every one of these that you've set down, it's going to refresh everything. So you don't want to put down 10,000 small trees because it's going to shut down your computer and make it very difficult to continue on. So what you do is say I want some dense wood, I click on dense wood and it gives me this little red square and that's the size of the dense wood that I'm gonna be putting down. And then I just click where I want it. The farther zoomed out you are, the bigger it's going to be in comparison to the rest of your map. So say if I zoomed in to 100, I went over here, it's going to be smaller. I like to have it zoomed out since I don't want to shut down my computer with how many of these things I've put on. Over here on the far right, you can set the size that you want your icons to be. So for example, I want to put a little bit of forest over on this small thing here. I can set my icon to be small enough so that it's not hanging out into the ocean. I did live in the Rocky Mountains for a period of time. So if there's one thing I know about mountains, it's that they cast a rain shadow and that on one side it's very, very green and then the other tends to be desert. So I'm going to put some desert on this side. That's pretty far north. So let's make that some glacier cold. Yeah, over here too. Wow, so cold. 
Okay, this is very quickly thrown together, but let's say I've got most of my basic geographical terrains mapped out. Now I'm gonna wanna add some cities and some big landmarks. My favorite of the city landmark options is this top one. Don't know how to say it, but I find them to be the prettiest, so that's what I go with. We've got big cities. I like to use these for like my big like capitals of kingdoms and things like that. I think I'm gonna stick with three. Three kingdoms seems very good, and then there will be some disputed lands, rebel groups, things like that, you know. Spice up a book. When I'm placing villages, I like to kind of look at the surrounding landmarks, um, the geography of the place. Like, it wouldn't make much sense for there to be a big settlement in the middle of the desert. Um, it's just not very tenable. Close to bodies of water, close to potential trade routes probably close on either side to the desert, but not actually in the middle of it. I like the megalith section and the memorial section for my big landmarks, like cemeteries, and I'll use the like trilithon just to remind me that there's something important here. This is fleshing out pretty well now. At this point, what I like to do is I like to come over here on the right and switch from graph paper just to plain white so that I can see everything really sharply. I like having the graph paper when I'm making things just so I can see if they're proportional, if I want to see that, if I'm caring about that. But now that I'm getting closer to the end, I prefer to just see everything flat. One of the things that I find very important for myself to do is to make myself a little key over here so that I can remember because I inevitably forget what all of the things stand for. I prefer to put all my text in in Photoshop because I don't think the text tool here is the most intuitive ever. And then the final thing that I like to do before I export it to add all of the titles and stuff is I like to put in roads so I at least roughly know which paths people would like to tread to get certain places. Um, for this, I could see the benefits of freehanding. However, I still prefer the fractal line. I think it looks so beautiful and it makes me feel fancy AF. I was realizing as I was making this that one of the things I forgot that's pretty crucial are ports, not every city that's on the coast is going to be a major port where people are sailing in and out of. I like to take this little longboat here and add that to the places where major shipping routes are gonna be happening. Let's make things interesting and say that there's some monsters up here. Makes that trade route pretty treacherous. And now I have a basic map. Um, for me personally, this is where I stop in Auto Realm. I like to save as a JPEG, though you have a few options. I'm gonna call this map yay wow.jpg. I can customize it to be a particular size. I wanna make sure it shows the entire map. I like to up the quality to 100 because I don't care that much about the size of this. And at this point, I like to open up Photoshop and I actually do all of the labeling of things in Photoshop. I'm just gonna go over really quickly what I do in Photoshop as well. So I'm gonna open up my JPEG file of my map. I use the text tool. I'm gonna change this to something really pretty and flowy because it's a map. Let's go for Canaria. Where are you? I have it set to do caps, which I don't want. Wow, so pretty. Snarfl. Now I'm gonna hit Control T on Snarfl so I can rotate it and put it wherever I want. And lastly, I go in and fill out the key, going back to Auto Realm if I need to, to refresh my memory. And voila, I have 
a map. This one isn't my prettiest map ever, but it's a map. So hopefully I have convinced you to use Auto Realm. I absolutely love this program and they are not sponsoring me to say that or anything. I use it for every new fantasy project that I have. I've put links down in the description to where you can download Auto Realm. Hopefully this tutorial will help get you started. If you're interested in checking out my GIMP map tutorial, where I teach you how to make a map in GIMP, check that out here. Again, GIMP is basically free Photoshop. And yeah, hopefully this has been helpful for you. Let me know any questions that you might have about Auto Realm, and I will try and help you to the best of my abilities. And I hope that I will see you this Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our usual Word Nerds live chat. Happy writing, good luck with your world building, and I will see you Sunday. Until then, stay nerdy.